it's Melanie. Welcome to my channel. So today I have part one of my September book outlet haul for you. So stay tuned. So once again, I bought too many books from book outlet, but that's okay because I love them. They're my children. <laughs> but don't tell my actual children. So I have four boxes here, so I'm going to split this into two videos, and today I'm just going to open these two boxes, and I will save the other two boxes for part two. Okay, let me move these out of the way, and we'll get started. Okay, so digging into the first box, we have some paper, and... more paper oh no I buried church <laughs> he's in the pile of paper okay I've got my receipt here okay so the first thing that I see in this box here is Hardy Boys Adventures Ultimate Thrills Collection 10 exciting mysteries in one set so I got the boxed set here I've actually never read The Hardy Boys, but I thought this would be something that Xander would probably really enjoy, and they're good short books, too. And this says, Frank and Joe Hardy are back in 10 of their most thrilling adventures yet. Join the dynamic duo as they track a jewel thief, wrestle a killer shark, get barreled down by a boulder, and more in these page-turning mysteries. The set includes, number one, Secret of the Red Arrow, Number two, Mystery of the Phantom Heist. Number three, The Vanishing Game. Number four, Into Thin Air. Number five, Peril at Granite Peak. Number six, The Battle of Bayport. Number seven, Shadows at Predator Reef. Number eight, Deception on the Set. Number nine, The Curse of the Ancient Emerald. And number 10, Tunnel of Secrets. And, I mean, they're boys that are like around his age solving mysteries and stuff so I, I think he would probably like this okay next up we have how to meet boys by Katherine Clark oh and I guess this was their last copy so on their last copy they put a sticker that says this is our last copy and it does not meet our quality standards if you're not happy with it please contact us but it's okay let me peel this off so I can see the whole thing on the back here. So this says, tip number one, do dive into a fun new social scene by grabbing a friend and heading to the closest body of water. Tip number two, do flirt with the guy making eyes at you across the beach bonfire. Tip number three, don't fall for your best friend's worst enemy. Lucy can't wait to spend the summer at the lake with her best friend, Michaela. But when Jackson, the boy she's been avoiding ever since he rejected her, appears in her life, Lucy wonders if this summer to remember is one she'd rather forget. Michaela's never had much luck talking to boys, but when she literally runs into the cutest guy she's ever seen and sparks fly, she thinks things might be looking up, until she realizes the adorable stranger is the same boy who broke her best friend's heart. As things begin to heat up between Michaela and the one guy she should avoid, Will Lucy be able to keep her cool, or will the girl's perfect summer turn into one hot mess? Church is trying to eat my book. <laughs> okay, next up we have The Looking Glass Wars. Fantasy Just Declared War on Reality by Frank Bador. And this looks really cool. The Myth. Alice Little was an ordinary girl who stepped through the looking glass and entered a fairy tale world invented by Lewis Carroll in his famous storybook. The truth. Wonderland is real. Alice Hart is the heir to the throne until her murderous Aunt Red steals the crown and kills Alice's parents. To escape Red, Alice and her bodyguard, Hatter Madigan, must flee to our world through the Pool of Tears. But in the pool, Alice and Hatter are separated. Lost and alone in Victorian London, Alice is befriended by an aspiring author to whom she tells the violent, heartbreaking story of her young life. Yet, he gets the story all wrong. 
Hatter Madigan knows the truth only too well, and he is searching every corner of our world to find the lost princess and return her to Wonderland, so she may battle Red for her rightful place as the Queen of Hearts. And y'all know I love, 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 love a fairy tale retelling. And I think my favorites are Alice in Wonderland ones. And yeah. <laughs> Ooh, and this has got some art inside. So that's Princess Alice Hart. We got the Jabberwocky there. Oh, this is cool. Red, the Caterpillar. There's Hatter Madigan and Queen Genevieve. Oh, there's a, quite a few of them. This is cool. I am so looking forward to reading this. Okay, next up we have book one and book two of the Monsters of Verity series. And this was a paperback. This one is a hardcover. And I actually already have a hardcover of this Savage Song. But I found this on Book Outlet and I enjoyed the story so much that I thought I would use this as a giveaway. So I'll tell you about this Savage Song since it's the first book in the series. But it's about... The town of Verity has been split into two parts. There's the monster side and then there's the human side. But really there's monsters on both sides and some of those monsters are human. And we have a girl, Kate Harker, whose father is this cruel man who controls the monsters and has people pay him for protection and she is like trying to be just like him and then we have a monster on the other side who is trying to be human and it's it's a really good story let me just read you what it says here there's no such thing as safe in a city full of monsters kate harker wants to be as ruthless as her father to prove she's worthy to stand beside him and lead their city august flynn wants to be human but he isn't He's a monster, one that can steal souls with the song, his own father's secret weapon. Their city is divided, their city is crumbling. Kate and August are the only two who see both sides, the only two who could do something. But how do you decide whether to be a hero or a villain when it's hard to tell which is which? And I really enjoyed this book, so I wanted to get the second one and also give away the first one. Okay, so that is all that's in this box. So let me tell you the prices for these. So this Savage Song was $2.81. Our Dark Duet was $5.43. The Looking Glass Wars Book 1 was $1.86. How to Meet Boys was $2.71. And the Hardy Boys set here was $22.94. So about $2.30 a book. So all... 14 books here came out to being $35.75 and then I used $20 in rewards and I paid $15.75 for all 14 of these. Okay, now let me move these aside so I can get the next box. Okay, now to dig into this box. We have some paper. Alright, and there's my Receipt. Okay, so the first thing I see here is The Spy Who Came In From The Cold by John Le Carre. Le Carre. And this, I believe, was on the PBS Top 100 Books or whatever. And I wanted to try to read more of those books on the list that I hadn't read. And so I found this on Book Outlet, so I got it. So this says... This is John Le Carre's third novel, a number one New York Times bestseller for 34 weeks, and the book that launched his career worldwide. In the shadow of the newly erected Berlin Wall, Alec Lamas watches as his last agent is shot dead by East German sentries. For Lamas, the head of Berlin station, the Cold War is over. As he faces the prospect of retirement or worse, a desk job, Control offers him a unique opportunity for revenge. Assuming the guise of an embittered and dissolute ex-agent, Lamas is set up to trap Munt, the deputy director of the East German Intelligence Service, with himself as the bait. Setting a standard that has never been surpassed, 
John le Carre's third novel is a devastating tale of duplicity and espionage and the haunting masterwork that first earned him international re renown. It's my goal to eventually work my way through that entire list. I actually like, printed it all out and stuff, so we'll see. <laughs> and this is the 50th anniversary edition of this book, and it looks really cool. I like the foil. And this was $2.71. Okay, next we have Ice Like Fire by Sarah Roche, and this is actually the sequel to Snow Like Ashes, and I've ordered Snow Like Ashes from Thrift Books, so you'll see that in my regular haul. Looks like that. So I pulled up on Goodreads what Snow Like Ashes is about. It says, a heartbroken girl, a fierce warrior, a hero in the making. Sixteen years ago, the Kingdom of Winter was conquered and its citizens enslaved, leaving them without magic or a monarch. Now the Winterians' only hope for freedom is the eight survivors who managed to escape and who have been waiting for the opportunity to steal back Winter's magic and rebuild the kingdom ever since. Orphaned as an infant during Winter's defeat, Mira has lived her whole life as a refugee, raised by the Winterian's general, Sir. Training to be a warrior and desperately in love with her best friend and future king, Mather, she would do anything to help her kingdom rise to power again. So when scouts discover the location of the ancient locket that can restore Winter's magic, Mira decides to go after it herself. Finally, she's scaling towers, fighting enemy soldiers, just as she always dreamed she would. But the mission doesn't go as planned, and Mira soon finds herself thrust into a world of evil magic and dangerous politics. And ultimately, it comes to realize that her destiny is not, never has been, her own. And I thought it sounded really interesting. Here it says, a kingdom reborn, a mysterious magic, a journey across the world. Can Mira be a queen and a warrior? <laughs> and this was 543. Okay, next up we have In Too Deep by Samantha Hayes. And this says, Would you trust your family? Four months ago, Rick went out to buy a newspaper. He never came back. His wife, Gina, is struggling to deal with her loss and her daughter's mood swings are getting worse. Then she receives a phone call from a woman at a country hotel confirming details of a booking Rick made before he vanished. Desperate to find out more about his disappearance, Gina and her daughter take the trip. But there is something very strange about the hotel and the family that run it. Soon, Gina is unsure that Rick even made the booking. But one thing is clear. Both mother and daughter are in serious danger. And it sounds really interesting. Your son is dead. Your husband is missing. And you're in too deep. And this was 364. Okay, next up is Pink by Lily Wilkinson. And this is about a girl named Ava who has decided she wants to change and she wants to go from being like this ultra cool, ultra black wearing, ultra radical kind of person to being the kind of person that wears pink and participates in high school musicals and has a cute boyfriend. And she realizes that, well, that's harder than she thought. And it sounded really cute. And this was $1.79. Okay, next up we have So You Want to Be a Writer? How to Write, Get Published, and Maybe Even Make It Big by Vicki Hamilton and Kathleen Greenwood. And, well, I just got this because I thought, you know, maybe one day, maybe, who knows. And this was $2.28. Okay, next up is The Starlit Wood. New Fairy Tales by Shannon McGuire, Jeffrey Ford, Naomi Novik, Aliette de Bodard, Majori Lou, Garth Nix, Catherine M. Valente, and more. And this was edited by Dominic Parison and Naval Wolf. And Fairy Tales. So this says. Once upon a time, in the desert, in a tower, on a spaceship, in the other country. For centuries, storytellers have crafted timeless tales that have always found a place in our hearts. 
Here, a new generation of critically acclaimed, award-winning writers have taken up their mantle and shaped traditional and extraordinary fairy tales into something startling and electrifying. From castles to canyons, from a post-human landscape to a pixelated dungeon, from the far future to fantastical realms, the Starlit Wood transforms 18 stories you thought you knew and takes you on a journey at once unexpected and familiar across time, space, and amazing new worlds. It's a book full of different fairy tale retellings. Oh my gosh. Ah, oh, I am so excited about this. Oh, this is cool. So in the, they have a table of contents. So in the table of contents here, they have the title of the tale, who it's by, and what it's a retelling of. So the first one is In the Desert Like a Bone, and that's by Shannon McGuire, and that is a retelling of Little Red Riding Hood. So excited! Oh my gosh. Okay. I cannot wait to read this. And this was four fifty eight. Okay, next up we have Uglies by Scott Westerfield, and this is book one in the Uglies series. I don't even know if you can see anything on this cover. It's a very white cover. <laughs> see some hands down here. The book is also very white, except for the blue font. Okay, this says, Tally is about to turn 16 and she can't wait. In just a few weeks, she'll have the operation that will turn her from a repellent ugly into a stunningly attractive pretty. And as a pretty, she'll be catapulted into a high-tech paradise where her only job is to have fun. But Tally's new friend Shay isn't sure she wants to become a pretty. When Shay runs away, Tally learns about a whole new side of the pretty world. And it isn't very pretty. The authorities offer Tally a choice. Find her friend and turn her in. Or never turn pretty at all. Tally's choice will change her world forever. And it sounded interesting. And I've heard this series mentioned many times by other booktubers. So I thought I would check it out. And... This cost $3.64. Okay, next up we have A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Bernard. And this is about a selectively mute girl and a deaf boy and the relationship they form. And it sounds like it's going to be really, really good. A lot of people talk about it and seem to love it. So I'm looking forward to reading this. And this was $5.10. And then the last book in my box is When Dimple Met Rishi by Sandea Minion. And this says, Dimple Shaha has it all figured out. With graduation behind her, she's more than ready for a break from her family and from Mama's inexplicable obsession with her finding the ideal Indian husband. Ugh. Dimple knows they must respect her principles at, on some level, though. If they truly believe she needed a husband right now, they wouldn't have paid for her to attend a summer program for aspiring web developers, right? Rishi Patel is a hopeless romantic, so when his parents tell him that he and his future wife will be attending the same summer program, wherein he'll have to woo her, he's totally on board. Because as silly as it sounds to most people in his life, Rishi wants to be arranged, believes in the power of tradition, stability, and being a part of something much bigger than himself. The Shahas and Patels didn't mean to start turning the wheels on this suggested arrangement so early in their ch children's lives, but when they noticed them both gravitating toward the same summer program, they figured, why not? Dimple and Rishi may think they have each other figured out, but when opposites clash, Love works hard to prove itself in the most unexpected ways. And I've heard really good things about this. I heard it was super cute. Ooh, and look how bright orange that is. <laughs> you know, I've only seen the front of this book, never the back. <laughs> this is what's on the back. This drink she's drinking here is all up in his face. <laughs> and this was 636. Okay, so that is all that's in this box. So the subtotal is $35.53, and again, I used $20 in rewards, and I got these for $15.53. So I got all 
nine of these books for $15.53. Not bad. I love Book Outlook just so much. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you.